your mics are live whenever you're ready, Commissioner. Okay. You're welcome. It's uh, almost 1.05 and we're back from our executive session. Uh, next item on our agenda is the enforcement hearing. Aaron Reardon, PDC case 12-160. Uh, as we begin, i like to um, make note that Aaron Reardon has um, waived his presence at this hearing, but he has submitted his arguments um, that the Commission has reviewed. And at this time, we'll have um, Mr. Stanifer present his arguments, staff's arguments. If that's correct. I think so. I'm sure. So I'll then proceed. Uh, Good afternoon to members of the commission. Uh, again, for the record, Chad Stanifer, Assistant Attorney General, representing the commission staff in this case. The respondent in this case, Aaron Reardon, has committed multiple violations of former RCW 4217-130 when he, number one, used his county cell phone and office in furtherance of his 2011 re-election campaign for Snohomish County Executive and number two, hired and then failed to monitor Snohomish County employee Kevin Holton, who likewise used county resources in furtherance of Mr. Reardon's 2011 re-election campaign. For the most part, the facts of this case are not really in dispute. As to Mr. Reardon's use of his county cell phone, Mr. Reardon admits to using his county cell phone to make and receive over 3,000 minutes of telephone calls and sending or receiving over a thousand uh, text messages to several campaign consultants in the months leading up to the 2011 election. He also does not dispute that he was paying these same campaign consultants thousands of dollars to work on his campaign during the period of time in which these phone calls and text messages took place. What Mr. Reardon does argue is that these campaign consultants were informal advisors to him on county issues and that he never discussed the campaign a single time with them using his county phone or his county office. Several county employees witnessed uh, Colby Underwood in particular meeting with Aaron Reardon in his office but again, Mr. Reardon disputes that any of these meetings were campaign related. And this is despite the fact that the work calendars of both Mr. Reardon and Colby Underwood show an overlap of meeting times on 56 different occasions between January and November of 2011. Staff, despite these differences, staff have established by a preponderance of the evidence that the that Mr. Reardon was discussing campaign issues using county facilities with these campaign consultants. These individuals, uh, in particular these campaign consultants, were just that, people being paid to work on Mr. Reardon's campaign. They were not being paid by the county, they were not under contract with the county, and they had no official role with the county. Mr. Reardon claims he regularly consulted with these individuals outside of the camp campaign context, but provides no concrete evidence of that. When staff, however, looked back prior to the election year of 2011, they found only 16 phone calls involving these individuals and Mr. Reardon between November and 2008 
and December of 2010. It is also worth noting what might be an obvious point. These are not uh, policy specialists, uh, public policy specialists. These are people who generally get paid to work on campaigns. That's what they do. I'll give you a few examples that are in the report of investigation and the exhibits. Exhibit 18 to the staff's report of investigation includes the contract between Colby Underwood and the committee to re-elect Aaron Reardon. That contract, make, that contract makes clear what Mr. Reard, uh, Underwood's job was. Simply put, it was to help Aaron Reardon raise money. In fact, Mr. Underwood was paid 15% of all gross funds raised per calendar month. Similarly, the contract between Aaron Reardon and TR Strategies and T Terry Thompson is found in Exhibit 19 to the Report of Investigation. TR Strategies was being paid to develop voter contact strategy and to devise a media campaign plan, among other things. And finally, I'd point you to Exhibit 17 to the report of investigation. That is documentation from Fletcher Rowley and Mr. Uh, John Rowley in particular. Fletcher Rowley is an advertising and public relations agency. They were being paid by Aaron Reardon for campaign media. Simply put, it is clear that if Aaron Reardon was communicating with Mr. Underwood, uh, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Rowley, whether in his office or on the phone, it is more likely than not that he was talking to them about the campaign and the assistance they were lending to him about that campaign. And that is a clear violation of former RCW 4217-130. Turning to Kevin Holton, Mr. Reardon does not dispute that Mr. Holton was assisting his campaign. He never has. Instead, he points to two things. Number one, to Kevin Holton's explanation that any documents that relate to the campaign were not located on his county, Mr. Holton's county issued computer. And number two, he argues that he, he had no awareness, again, zero awareness of what Mr. Holton was doing on county, uh, using county resources. Staff would submit that neither of those explanations is credible. The documentation provided by Snohomish County establishes that these documents were in fact found on Mr. Holton's Snohomish County laptop by the Snohomish, Snohomish County uh, Information Services Department, their, their IT people. It is also worth noting, even if some of the documents were stored on the cloud, uh, as Mr. Holton is suggesting, Mr. Holton was using a county laptop, which is itself a county facility that can't be used to further a campaign. Even if none of the documents were stored on the hard drive, again, Mr. Holton was working on them using a laptop, and during periods of time in which he was scheduled to be working for the county, again, a violation of the statute. As to Mr. Reardon's claim that he was not aware of what Mr. Holton was doing, Mr. Reardon appears to rely on the fact that he points to Mr. Holton's job title, that he was hired to be an executive analyst at the county, and he was not specifically hired by the county to work on the campaign. But the use of a county employee, whatever that employee's job title or official duties, uh, is the use of a facility under the statute. Regardless of Mr. Holton's official duties, we have to look at the fact that he was using county facilities and the evidence establishes he was misusing those facilities in furtherance of Mr. Reardon's campaign. It's also worth noting something that Mr. Reardon actually points to in his submission to you, his most recent submission. Mr. Holton's direct supervisor, Gary Hawkinson, confirmed that Mr. Reardon did not want to fire Kevin Holden because basically he feared the potential political fallout from that firing. Mr. Reardon can't have it both ways. If you fail to hold an employee accountable that you hired, you bear responsibility for his continued misconduct, especially where that misconduct benefits your own campaign. 
Commission staff respectfully request that you enter an order finding Aaron Reardon to have violated the statute, former RCW 4217-130, and penalize him accordingly. And I'll talk for a few, a, a few minutes about the penalty. Uh, with respect to the penalty, as you know, the maximum penalty in this case would be $4,200. Staff contend the maximum penalty is appropriate here. In reviewing prior commission cases, staff could not really find a case that closely resembled this matter, and for that reason we have not supplied you with a list of comparable cases. Generally, we could state that in several prior matters involving the use of county or use of public facilities, individuals have paid uh, penalties for even minimal use of public facilities, such as, for example, the sending of a few emails uh, in support of a campaign. Mr. Reardon's use of public facilities was much more extensive, and there are a number of aggravating factors specified in the WAC. 390-37-182, which do speak to a significant penalty here. Specifically, the respondent was an elected official who had run for office previously. He was therefore sophisticated about campaigns, which is a factor under the WAC. He also should have known through this sophistication that this was a violation, again a factor under the WAC. And the Commission is also allowed to look at other relevant factors, even factors which aren't explicitly set forth in the, in the WAC itself. And we would submit that other aggravating factors here include the fact that Aaron Reardon did benefit politically from these violations, as they did provide support for his successful re-election campaign. And it is also uh, an aggravating factor that this was not an isolated event which took place over a very short period of time. We're talking about multiple violations of the statute which occurred over the course of several months uh, and in those months leading up to the 2011 election. In summary, for all of, for all of these reasons, staff contend it would be within your discretion to award a penalty for as much as the maximum that would be possible in this case of $4,200. So those are my prepared uh, remarks. And with that, I would certainly take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Questions? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Stanford. Thank you. Um, would the commission like to come um, put a closed session? I think I'm ready to make a motion, Madam Chair. Okay. Um. Madam Chair, with respect to uh, Public Disclosure Commission case number 12-160, which is captioned in compliance with RCW 42.17A, where an urban rearing is the respondent. I move that the Commission find that Aaron Reardon committed multiple violations of former RCW 42.17.130 when he, number one, used his county-issued cell phone in furtherance of his two, uh, two, 2011 re-election campaign for Snohomish County Executive, and number two, hired and then failed to monitor Snohomish County employee Kevin Holton, who likewise used county resources in furtherance of the respondent's re-election campaign. Uh, Madam Chair, I further move, in light of Mr. Reardon's multiple violations, the Commission should issue a penalty in the amount of $4,200. It's been moved and seconded to find Aaron Reard committed multiple vi violations of RCW 4217.130 and to issue a penalty in the amount of $4,200. Would you care to speak to your motion, Mr. Bridges? Commissioner Bridges, excuse me. Madam Chair, following up on Mr. Standard's arguments to the court uh, this afternoon, 
I think he referenced Exhibit 17 regarding Mr. Rowley, Exhibit 19 regarding TR strategies. Uh, also talked about the evidence that came directly from Snohomish County as to the use of uh, the computer, the county computer by Mr. Holton. I think I've taken that into consideration. Also, have reviewed Exhibit 13 and 29 as a part of the investigative packet. And in doing so, um, with regard to Mr. Reardon's use of his county issued cell phone, I think staff, in my mind at least, clearly established that Mr. Reardon sent and received numerous calls and text messages from and to his paid campaign consultants. Uh, and indeed, they were that. None of these paid consultants had a contract with or were paid by the county. Mr. Reardon provides no credible explanation as to the nature of these calls or the dramatic increase in the number of calls over the prior non-election years. With regard to Mr. Holton, uh, staff has established that Mr. Holton used his county laptop in furtherance of Mr. Reardon's 2011 re-election campaign. Mr. Reardon hired Mr. Holton in early 2011. Several documents recovered from Mr. Holton's laptop were related to Mr. Reardon's 2011 re-election um, campaign opponent and were outside of his normal county duties. The document properties established that Mr. Holton worked on these documents during his normal working hours. Mr. Reardon supervised Mr. Holton and on at least one occasion rewrote a negative evaluation of Mr. Holton. Mr. Reardon, both as a candidate and as a supervisor, failed to monitor Mr. Holton's campaign activities, which occurred while Mr. Holton was working for the county. Any other discussion, comments? I would uh, concur in uh, toto with Commissioner Bridges. Uh, I think the record is clear in, in this matter, uh, particularly in regard to the increase in phone usage, the text messages uh, to several individuals who had no official county business and the respondent um, put forth nothing in the record um, to uh, counter that and to uh, provide any evidence that there was appropriate county business being conducted with those four individuals and as well the use of the laptop and the information found on it um, I think all uh, justify the, the imposition of the maximum penalty allowed at the time that these multiple violations occurred. Any further? Uh, I, I would just say that I, I concur with both my colleagues up here and um, feel like this is one of the most egregious cases that we, I've seen anyway and um, concur with the maximum penalty law to use. So um, with that, um, the motion's been presented, seconded, and um, reviewed. All those in favor? And opposed, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Um, for further steps, uh, an order will be issued that reflects the commission's findings here today, and two weeks will be sent to the parties. Anything else for this today? No, thank you. Thank you. If not, is there anything else for the good of the order for the commission meeting today? Hearing none, I would adjourn the commission meeting. Thank you. I've already got this